News 46 is brought to you by Dr. George Leakes, Harum's optometrist since 1990, offering full-spectrum eye care for children and adults. Call today, 727-8300. News is also brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. News 46 is also brought to you by Humana, serving the community. Please stop in at 1397 South Loop Road on the corner of Loop and Highway 160. Tonight on News 46, several horses are brutally attacked at a ranch, and a man is arrested for indecent exposure at a children's dentistry. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 46, local coverage you can count on. A quiet community is shaken to the core following a vicious attack on several horses. It's Monday, August 20th. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. They have Arabians, Appaloosas, quarter horses, and even a donkey. The Big Pine Saddle Club near Bishop, California, was formed in 1975 by employees of the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, who wanted horses but didn't own property to house them. The legend continues now with the second generation, who passed down the tradition on the 15-acre property, continuing their deep love of horses. Last month, the peaceful and serene lifestyle on the ranch was rattled to their core when several of their animals were found stabbed and their throats slashed. Items were stolen out of the sheds and even a truck was set on fire. Facility owner Shelley Snodderly spoke to News 46 over the phone recently. On July 2nd of this year, members at the Big Pine Saddle Club in Big Pine were alerted to a fire that was happening at their facility. Fire crews arrived on scene and found a car fire at about 1.30 in the morning. The next morning, Shelley Snodderly, who runs the facility, was alerted to seven horses that had been knived and had their throats cut open. Four of them required stitches for their wounds. We spoke to Snodderly on the phone. It was about 1.30 that there was a sheriff. He noticed a fire in the saddle club. So he called it in to the fire department. They responded. They just honestly thought that it was some kids that set a vehicle on fire and didn't think anything of it. The horses didn't seem to be too aroused up or crazy or anything, so they thought all was good. It was about 7 o'clock that morning that I got the first phone call from one of the members stating that she had found it was another member's donkey and his throat had been slit from one side to the other. And um, she had stated that her shed had been broke into and that some of her, her stuff from her shed had been strung out all over. I hang up with her, and about not even 15 minutes later, another member called me, and as she was walking up to feed her friend's horse, and she goes, oh my God, Chaco is severely cut. They found there was a total of nine horses, seven of them that had been cut on the neck or the throat area, and then two of them had been hit on the head, and one of them had been cut and hit with a blunt object. The poor horse could barely walk. He was pretty battered. Chaco had been from one side of his neck to the other, about 14 inches total. He had, I want to say, they put like 14 staples or 16 staples in him. And we were told that he was very lucky because if it would have just been a little bit further, he could have died. She also describes that the horses are a little weary of new people now. They know so many of us in the, the club, so like when I go to check on them, I will walk up and they will they will come to the, the fence to see me. But, you know, if I have somebody that they've never seen before next to me, they're a little more shy. Snodderly tells News 46 that police are on the trail of who they think that is actually responsible for this horrific attack. It sounds like it might possibly be juveniles. 
I, I'm thinking it's more of a, a the younger adult. They're thinking it was probably three to four people, and they've kind of narrowed down who it might be. They have sent evidence off to have it DNA tested and fingerprinted. If you would like to help out Big Pine Saddle Club, you can go to GoFundMe.com forward slash Big Pine Saddle Club. This is Deanne O'Donnell for News 46 horrible story but I hear that officials are saying that they may be making an arrest in that case soon. A man who drove heavy construction equipment to the local market was arrested after he says he had been drinking and driving all day throughout the valley. Daniel Fadich has been arrested for a second DUI, possession of a stolen vehicle, and petty larceny. According to the declaration of arrest, several deputies responded in reference to an intoxicated person at the Family Dollar on Homestead Road here in Pahrump. Dispatchers advised that a white adult male wearing a black bandana, tan shorts, and a tan backpack was allegedly severely intoxicated and harassing the staff and customers at the business. Witnesses observed the subject enter a heavy equipment construction loader and headed southbound on Homestead Road. Deputies located the subject parked in a dirt lot just off of Laura Lee Street. The man was identified by the name of Daniel Fadich. Upon making contact, deputies noticed Daniel exit the loader and started to finish a Buzz Balls mixed alcoholic drink, also noting that there were several Buzz Balls scattered across the loader. Daniel stated that he had taken the loader around the area of Lakeside Casino, located in Pahrump, as well as the Maverick gas station to steal alcoholic beverages, and that he had been trying to get arrested all day. Daniel was unable to keep his balance and was incoherent in his responses to the deputies, but stated that he was having relationship problems with his girlfriend. He asked deputies to do whatever you've got to do, just take me to jail, while also making spontaneous utterances numerous times that he had been driving for six hours stealing beer. Daniel was placed into custody and transported to the Knight County Sheriff's Office Detention Center without further incident. This is Peyton Kingston for News 46. Thanks, Peyton. A local man and uh, your business first brief right after this break.